Hello, in this video, we will see physiological anatomy of skeletal muscles. We will see all the structural aspects that you need to know to understand the excitation contraction coupling and muscle contraction. Let's get started. This is a cut section of a skeletal muscle. As you can see, the muscle is made up of muscle fascicles. If we look individual fasciculus closely, we can see that it is made up of multiple muscle fibers. The fibers are aligned linearly. Muscle fibers are also called myofiber or simply muscle cell. It is the smallest contractile unit of the muscle. It is elongated and in most skeletal muscles, it extends the entire length of the muscle. So this is a gross structure of skeletal muscle. Now let's have a closer look inside a muscle fiber. The muscle fiber contains myofibrils, sarcoplasm, transverse tubules, sarcoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, multiple nuclei, other cellular organelles, and sarcolemma. This three-dimensional cut section gives you better understanding of the structure. Now we will learn about all these components one by one. First, myofibrils. They are cylindrical and arranged parallelly like this. Each muscle fiber contains hundreds to thousands of such myofibrils. Each myofibril is a chain of regularly repeating units called sarcomere. Sarcomere consists of myofilaments which are responsible for muscle contraction. They include thin filaments and thick filaments. Adjacent sarcomeres are joined at Z discs. And of course, the same structure is repeated in all the sarcomeres. Now let's have a closer look at thin filaments. It consists of actin, tropomyosin and troponin. This is an actin molecule. It has a myosin binding site. Many such actin molecules polymerize to form a double-stranded helix called filamentous actin or F-actin. It is attached to Z-disc at one end and it makes the backbone of the thin filament. Then we have tropomyosin. Two thread-like tropomyosin molecules lie alongside the actin helix and physically cover the binding site for myosin. You know what? The tropomyosin thread itself is also a double helix. You can see that it covers binding site on actin molecules. So that was tropomyosin. Finally, we have troponin. It attaches the tropomyosin to actin. It is made up of three subunits named troponin C, troponin T, and troponin I. Troponin C binds to calcium. Troponin T binds to tropomyosin. And troponin I binds actin and inhibits contraction. And of course, there are many such troponin molecules in thin filament. So this was thin filament made up of actin, tropomyosin, and troponin. In a sarcomere, they are arranged like this. Moving to the thick filament. They lie in between and partially interdigitate with thin filaments. Structurally, they are assembly of hundreds of myosin-2 molecules. Myosin-2 molecule in turn is made up of two identical heterotrimers. Individual trimer consists of a myosin heavy chain and two light chains, namely essential light chain and a regulatory light chain. The heavy chain has head, neck and rod. The head has a binding site for actin at the tip and binding site for ATP at the middle. Next is the neck region. Both the light chains are bound to this portion. The light chains mechanically stabilize the neck and are also involved in regulation of cross bridge interaction. Further down, two heavy chains of myosin dimer come together. At the rod portion, both the heavy chains wind around each other to form a dimer. 
So this is one unit. Assembly of many such dimers form thick filament. At the middle of the thick filament, myosin molecules on both sides are cross-linked. This midline is called the M line. There are no heads near this central region of the thick filament. Myosin is responsible for force generation. So this was thick filament and this is the basic structure of sarcomere. The same structure is repeated in all sarcomere. Now let's talk about bands. Partial interdigitation of thick and thin filaments produces light and dark bands alternately. This is how the entire sarcomere appears. Light band is a region of thin filament that does not overlap with thick filament. It's known as the I band. Z disc appears as a dark perpendicular line at the center of this band. During contraction, thick filaments overlap with more and more portion of thin filaments. So this band shortens during contraction and widens during relaxation. Thus the length of light band changes. Now the dark bands. They are the region of thick filaments. They are also known as A bands. Their length remains constant during contraction and relaxation. Part of the A band where thin filaments are not there is called the H band. And at the middle we have M line. So this is how myofibril looks from the side. Now let's take a look at cut section. It will help you understand three dimensional arrangement of filaments. At I band we have only thin filaments. They are arranged like this as seen in a cut section. Each circle here is a thin filament. At the edge band there are only thick filaments arranged like this. And the portion of A band where thin and thick filaments overlap appears like this. Here you can see that each thick filament is surrounded by six thin filaments. So this is the arrangement of thin and thick filaments. If all these is confusing to you, don't worry. Understanding only this part is enough to understand physiology of muscle contraction. So let's move back to it. Next we want to learn about Z discs. Here we have alpha actin proteins. The Z disc cross links thin filaments from adjacent sarcomeres. Thus, Z discs tether thin filaments of myofibril together. But this is not it. Z discs of adjacent myofibrils are also connected. This connects neighboring myofibrils and aligns their sarcomeres in one plane. This highly organized structure allows skeletal muscles to generate considerable mechanical force. It also gives them a striated appearance when seen under a microscope. A similar striated arrangement is seen in cardiac muscle also, but not in smooth muscles. Now this amazing architecture is surrounded by another amazing structure. Surrounding all the myofibrils is a network of tubules called the transverse tubule sarcoplasmic reticulum system. As per the name, it is made up of transverse tubules and sarcoplasmic reticulum. Transverse tubules run transverse to the myofibrils. They are formed by the invagination of the cell membrane and branches to surround all myofibrils. Remember the bands of myofibrils. T tubules pass near the junction of A and I bands. So each sarcomere is surrounded by two T tubules. Now as they are invagination of the cell membrane, they contain extracellular fluid. When the cell is stimulated at the neuromuscular junction, the action potential is generated and spreads along the membrane. Along the T-tubule, it penetrates deep into the cell to reach all the myofibrils. The other structure surrounding the myofibril is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. It is a special type of endoplasmic reticulum. And like any endoplasmic reticulum, it stores calcium. It is composed of two major parts, longitudinal tubules and terminal cisternae. Longitudinal tubules surround most of the surface of the myofibril. Terminal cisternae associate with T-tubules. Each T-tubule has one terminal cisterna on each side. 
This combination of T tubule and two neighboring terminal cisterni is called a triad junction or simply a triad. If we simplify this three dimensional structure into two dimensions, it would look like this. These are T tubules. In a cut section, they appear circular. This is sarcoplasmic reticulum. This is its longitudinal tubule. And these are terminal cisternae. Underneath, we have myofibril. This is A band. And these are I bands. See, the T tubule is located over junction of these bands. Now, the triad junction. As we have just seen, the triad contains T tubule and terminal cisterna on both the sides. Here, the T tubule membrane contains L type of calcium channels and terminal cisterna contains calcium release channels. These channels are also known as rhinodine receptors. Both these channels make physical contact. Action potential traveling along the T tubule activates L type of calcium channels. Opening of these channels physically opens calcium release channels also. This along with the entire arrangement of T tubule sarcoplasmic reticular system plays a very important role in excitation contraction coupling. So this was all about T tubules and sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now let's see the other things. Next we have sarcoplasm. It is intracellular fluid in between myofibrils. One of its characteristic content is the sarcoplasmic reticulum that we have already seen. Apart from that, it has numerous mitochondria. They lie parallel to myofibrils and provide ATPs for muscle contraction. Then we have nuclei. One muscle cell contains multiple nuclei. There are also other organelles. Finally, we have sarcolemma. It consists of the plasma membrane and an outer coat. This coat is made up of thin layer of polysaccharide material that contains numerous thin collagen fibers. At the end of the fiber, the outer layer fuses with the muscle tendon. Thus most of the muscle fibers extend the entire length of the muscle. So this was all we wanted to see in this video. Anatomy of the neuromuscular junction is covered in a separate video along with neuromuscular transmission. Let's have a quick summary. Skeletal muscles are made up of fascicles. The fascicles in turn are made up of muscle fibers or muscle cells. Characteristic content of muscle cell are myofibrils, T tubules and sarcoplasmic reticulum. Myofibrils are array of sarcomeres arranged linearly. It's made up of thin filaments and thick filaments. Thin filaments are made up of actin, tropomyosin and troponin. Thick filaments are made up of myosin 2 molecules. These filaments are the contractile machinery of the muscle. The myofibrils are surrounded by T tubules sarcoplasmic reticulum system. T tubules invaginate from the cell membrane and branches to make a network of T tubules around myofibrils. Associated with it is sarcoplasmic reticulum that stores calcium. Together, these T tubules and sarcoplasmic reticulum plays very important role in excitation contraction coupling. Dispersed throughout the cytoplasm are mitochondria that supply ATP for muscle contraction. So this was the physiological anatomy of the skeletal muscle. That's it for this video. If you feel this video will help your friends and colleagues, please share it with them too. And don't forget to subscribe because lots more to come. At Nonstop Neuron, learning medical concepts is as easy as watching cartoons. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.